Boy, I can't wait to see what Nintendo is going to do with the NX. Considering how well the Wii U did, <laughs> there's really nowhere to go but up. Yes! They're bringing consoles and handhelds together! This is a dream come true! <sighs> Man, these rumors about the Switch Pro are really getting out of hand. Do we really need one after only two years? Huh. A Switch that doesn't switch. Well, I uh, guess that about does it for the Switch Pro rumors. <laughs> Nintendo keeps saying that the Switch is only about halfway through its lifespan. If they're going to release a Pro model, well, now would be the time. <sighs> well, COVID will probably be blamed for this too. The Switch OLED has been out for about a week now, and since then, many of us have been able to get familiar with the latest member of the Switch family. That being the case, we've got some tips and tricks, as well as just plain old observations about the OLED model. So whether you're looking for a Switch OLED for yourself, or maybe you've got one sitting in your hands, I'll be sharing this information right now. If you're coming from another Switch, whether you'll be holding on to it or not, you'll probably want to carry over your progress to your new Switch OLED. Nintendo has provided a way to do just that, and I'll walk you through the steps. When you start your system up for the first time, you will reach the Add User screen. It's pretty self-explanatory here, so go ahead and select the second option, Import User Data from Another Console, if you're coming over from another Switch. The next screen asks if you still have your old system. I'm going to say yes here since I do. And on the next screen, you'll be asked if you'll be keeping the older Switch, and in this case, I will be, so I'm going to select yes. If you will not be keeping your old Switch, all your data on your old Switch will be deleted once it's transferred, so be sure you pick the right option for you. Next, we'll need to link our Nintendo account to our new Switch, so I'm going to select Link a Nintendo Account. Out of the box, your system will likely need to update, assuming you've connected it to the internet via Wi-Fi or a wired connection, so go ahead and let it do that now. Once it updates and restarts, you'll be brought back to the Add User screen where you'll need to run through the same previous steps. Once you select Link a Nintendo Account again, you'll be able to sign in using your password or by using a QR code with your smartphone. Even if you use the QR code, you'll still need to sign in on your phone with your password, so just go with whichever method you feel the most comfortable with. I've selected the QR code, so I will fill in my information on my phone. Once I've done that, Nintendo will send a 5-digit verification code that I'll need to enter here. The next screen will show your username, and so we'll select OK if it's correct. Once our account has been added to the new Switch, you should be asked about cloud saving. You will need to have a Nintendo Switch Online membership to use this feature, and if you already have one, I sincerely recommend you enable Cloud Saves. Even if you don't have the online service, you can sign up for a free trial through a My Nintendo account, which is completely free to sign up for. If this sounds like a hassle, you should seriously consider signing up for the trial if you are planning on using your old Switch alongside your new one. You'll see why soon. We'll go ahead and select OK on this next screen. You'll be asked if you want to add more users, whether you'll be importing them over from the old Switch or not. If so, you'll need to repeat this process for each user account you'll be transferring. Once you're done here, you can select Skip, and next we're greeted with a message about Nintendo Switch Online, followed by the option to set up parental controls, then finally get to the home screen. Next up, you may want to use the same micro SD card that you have in your current Switch and move it over to the new Switch. The good news about this part of the process is it is as simple as taking it out of the old Switch and putting it in the new one. The bad news, however, is that the new Switch will then go ahead and reformat the SD card, meaning that it can only be used on that new Switch and also you lose any installation files that you've got downloaded onto the SD card. And from what I can tell, there is no getting around this. I even tried backing up my SD card contents onto my computer so I didn't have to re-download everything onto my new Switch and back onto my old Switch with a new SD card, but it didn't work. 
the new switch simply refuses to recognize anything you transfer from a PC backup, at least based on my experience. So you'll just need to re-download all your digital games, DLC, and software updates, which does take quite a while. It is fairly easy to get the process started, however. Open up the eShop and scroll over to your username icon in the upper right corner. Then scroll down to re-download and select the icon on the right of each title you want to re-download. Your physical game titles will not appear here. You'll actually need to insert each game card one at a time, press plus to get into the options, select software update, then via the internet. You'll need to do this for all your physical games to have them running on the latest version. You'll also be prompted to update if you just pop in a game and start it while connected to the internet, so you may just want to wait to update until you need to. Finally, you'll want to transfer all of your saved data onto your new console. There are two ways to go about doing this, and it really depends on whether or not you have a Nintendo Switch Online membership. If you do, I strongly recommend that you take advantage of the Save Data Cloud. On your old Switch, assuming you still have it and selected the option to keep using it, you'll want to go into System Settings, then Data Management, then Save Data Cloud, which will prompt you to select your user profile. Under All Save Data, make sure all your game titles that have saves you want transferred over have the check mark with the words Backed Up next to it. If it says something else, select the title where it may say something like you have conflicting save data, one on your old switch and one in the cloud. I recommend just overriding whichever save data is older each time you encounter this message. Once you've made sure all your save data is backed up through the cloud, simply go to the same spot on your new switch and for each title download the save data. Thankfully, this process will not take long as save data tends to be megabytes in size as opposed to gigabytes. Now that your new Switch OLED is set up and ready to go, I do have some tips and tricks from both Henry and myself that we've observed over the past week. If there's something that we have missed that you've either noticed yourself or heard about from somebody else, definitely leave a comment to share it with the rest of us. First, a couple of warnings when using the Switch OLED. One of the key new features, the upgraded stand in the back, requires that you use your fingernails to separate the stand from the Switch's body. Be sure to be careful, however, since there are vents covered with a fragile mesh located right around where you would use your fingernails. So it is very possible to accidentally puncture the mesh with your nail. To avoid this, I always make sure to place my nail in the center on this divot, since those vents are not located around this area. Since you'll be doing quite a bit of downloading on your first day or so, make sure to keep your Switch either docked or at least plugged in. While Henry was downloading Rocket League, his battery dropped from 91 to 19%. Likely, your Switch is set to download while it's in sleep mode, and if it isn't, you'll probably want to change that in the system settings, as downloading apparently takes up quite a bit of juice. Next up, accessories! I don't use any grips that attach to my switches in handheld mode, but since the OLED is a few millimeters wider than the standard switch, you won't be able to use those grips. I have heard some people have found their snug-fitting switch cases unable to fit the OLED model, but check your current switch case before you go rushing out to buy a new one. I have two cases, one that's a hard case and the other is a soft one. They're both designed for the standard switch, yet my OLED fits both cases just fine. So the only way to be sure is to just see if your OLED switch will fit on your own. The Wi-Fi strength of the Switch OLED also seems to be better. Since I have two docks now, I moved one into my office here. And while my standard switch shows two out of three bars while in this dock, the OLED switch has all three bars lit up. So I suspect the Wi-Fi antenna in the Switch OLED is probably larger. Finally, I'll end with two things that are more a matter of taste than anything else. There is a new option in the system settings under system called console screen colors. We have two options to choose from, standard and vivid, and my Switch OLED came set to vivid by default. Personally, I prefer the standard setting since the vivid colors aren't very accurate. Reds look like they have a purplish tint, for instance, and it's certainly something I recommend you toggle between to see which one you prefer. I've also heard some criticism of the game card cover. The tab that you can slide your fingernail into to open up the cover has been changed to be longer and thinner, 
and I guess the knock against this new design is it's harder to open now. For me, it requires only slightly more effort to open, and I think it's something that will end up loosening up the more you use it. So those are my tips and tricks for your new Switch OLED. How are you enjoying the new model? Are you a standard Switch owner that finds the new model intriguing? Let me know in the comments, and also let me know if you have any questions or want to see any other Switch issues covered. I made another video a while back that explains how to play the same game on two Switches at the same time, so be sure to check that out if you now own more than one Switch. This is Steven with Level 1 Sword, and I'll see you all later. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to keep on top of the videos, definitely take a sec to subscribe. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon if you want to follow me across the internet. Level 1 Sword also has a bi-weekly podcast, so give it a listen.